welcome one and all to The Early Show with him, your host, Aidan Stone. Did you go to school, Terry? Oh yeah, for a tiny bit. Well, why, why just a little bit? Well, there was this big global disaster and all the schools closed. Why, well, what happened? A massive meteorite hit the Earth and wiped out all reptilian life. I bet that set you back a bit. Not really. They made us carry on doing virtual learning anyway. Logging on to Teams, handing in stuff late and so on. <laughs> I preferred real school, hanging out with my mates and all that. So what were you good at? Don't know much about history. Don't know much biology. Don't know much about science books. Don't know much about the French I took. So you're an art student then? Yeah, that's right. That's all. Get your books out, boy. Sorry, sir, I can't. Why not? For two reasons. One, neither the act of writing nor the printing press have been invented yet. And? No one's evolved posable thumbs yet. Excellent. What do you know about history? Absolutely nothing, sir. And why not? Technically, with us being in prehistory, you know, all of history is in the future, as nothing's actually happened yet. Excellent. What about geography? Absolutely nothing, sir. We don't know where we're going. When we get there, we don't know where we are. And when we get back, we don't know where we've been. Sigma, what physics do you know? Absolutely nothing, sir. Half the population think the world is run by some mysterious magic. And the other half? As long as they get their tea, they don't give them monkeys. Preferably their tea is monkeys. Delicious. Mm. Chemistry? Fire hasn't been discovered yet, sir. And even if it was, we'd all be frightened of it. How's your French? Absolutely rubbish, sir. French hasn't been invented yet. We dinosaurs communicate mainly by making strange guttural sounds in our throats. Maybe that is French. So what are you good at, Doctor? Musical theatre, sir! <laughs> the Phantom of the Opera is there inside my mind. We've got a great show for you this morning. We've got Alec Drew talking to us about internet communications and the unintended consequences of being online. Lovely. Alec, great not to have you with us this morning. <laughs> great not to be there, Aid. <laughs> Brilliant. Now, you're an expert in talking to businesses about proper use of ICT, proper use of technology in business. And I thought it'd be a great idea for us to have a chat about about embracing technology, um, especially with us having to use it so much more during this lockdown. We're having to deliver lessons on it, we're having to watch me on it, we're having to watch you on it, and all this sort of stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm looking to you to say, what advice have you got? And uh, what sort of things have you been talking to people about during this time, and how can we apply it to us? Well, strangely enough, I, I've been somebody who would have been from the old school of business in terms of, I think technology is brilliant and I think it brings so much to business in terms of efficiencies and productivity. However, what's happened is it, it, it started to overtake certain of what I would have called the basic and the fundamentals of business um, because people have embraced it so quickly without understanding what I call the unintended consequence of the long-term effects of it. So let me give you a quick example of that in business. I, I was just thinking recently of uh, my grandson and I came home and saw all these tiny finger marks on my brand new 55 inch screen television. <laughs> now, I wasn't going to give out because I saw him come over and there he was trying to drag the screen across. And I, I looked and thought, what, what is that for that? <laughs> and my daughter said, hey, Dad, he thinks it's interactive. He thinks it's intuitive. And yeah. I smiled because he, th this young fellow had already taken, he's four years of age, had taken my daughter's iPhone, had managed to break into it, had phoned somebody who was a business <laughs> contact of hers, and then managed to hang up and lock her back out of it. And he's four years of age. So what she was saying was that technology is intuitive. And that's one of the unintended consequences of, te of, of technology in terms of business, because what happens is if you bring that mindset into a business setting and introduce a new piece of technology, your presumption is that people can use it very quickly, when in fact it's probably a bit more complicated. And in, in the olden sort of days, you would have brought in somebody who would have trained up the staff on using that, that technology, so everybody was up to speed and got the best out of it. But when you presume it's, it's intuitive, what happens is you just throw it in like a grenade into the office 
the nerds get assaulted by everybody who wants to know how to do this quickly. So they get taken away from their tasks and now they're trainers. You've got people who are now on the internet trying to learn it and you have the others who will never catch up with it but won't go to management because they're afraid they'll be seen as inept. And so now what you have is something which should have been brilliant and made a huge difference in terms of productivity and efficiency in the office is now counterproductive. And that's what I'm talking about, the unintended consequence of technology. Right, and that's what's actually what's happened to us. So we've been thrust into this world. We didn't, we didn't expect it. We tackled it very quickly. We've got online lessons flying about. We've got these chats going on. We've got video calls going on. In a, on a level unprecedented that we, we never engaged with before. So our young people are um, having to engage with this, they're having, to, they're having to send messages, they're having to be online at certain times, they're having to um, get lessons off, 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 the, uh, off our um, system. What advice have we got for them? I mean, are they, we, we don't want them to be on the screen all the time and we're trying to take, take tasks that take them away from that, but there are other un- unintended consequences, as you put it, of, of this you know time for our education. Well, really what's happened is that the communication, particularly from those who have smartphones from whatever age, 8, 9, 10, all the way up from there, uh, their main form of communication seems to be text, which is kind of very, very strange because you you see their eyes down as they walk along the street texting friends and and these small messages. And really what's happening, the art of conversation has been missed out. It's very, very hard to understand what somebody's actually trying to say to you, unless you can see what they used to say, the whites of their eyes, you know, uh, what, is, what is the intention behind what's being said? Right. And, and I, I think it's very unfortunate for, for the generation, the, the generation Z coming up, that a lot of the communications are being misunderstood because you're, you're reading something. And, and you don't see the intent behind it. And that has potential for all sorts of rows and all sorts of different things yeah, happening. Seen them I think you have to be careful of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people trying to be funny, people being serious, but you don't get that, you don't get that emotional gist, that emotional content at all, do you? From just a yeah. text, you can't pick up if it's sarcastic or not, can you? No, no. So it, so I think you, you, you have to be careful. It, it's a bit like, um, if I was to say to you, Wade, the, the two words f off i could probably say it in five different ways that would give five different meanings to it probably three or four of them you'd laugh at and the other one you'd feel highly insulted that's why i use that I just, but it's it's in terms of if i text it right. you have no understanding of what i'm saying and you will take it the way you feel just at that moment I hope that's not too close to the bone. (laughs) No, but that reminds me of another unintended consequence of um, when you and I were at school, we might have conversations, we might get up to stuff after school, we might get up to stuff at the weekend, and there is absolutely no record of it. (laughs) That's true. No, and I think that's true. And and you've identified something that, yes, I I hadn't thought of it about that way. I must actually take a note of that from my own talks, actually. But you you tend to forget that. No, there was no record, thank goodness. So we would have been in a lot more trouble. And I think it's very, very unfortunate that so many young people find themselves engaged in all sorts of what on the surface seems to be harmless practices that are now captured on either video or in still photos and then shared out on the internet and can never be removed and i think that uh, people don't understand that the seriousness of that potentially for their future life ahead of them yeah and i don't think we've seen the sort of ramifications of that we haven't been doing it long enough to see the long-term ramifications no. of of people calling back on a chat a chat that was done a decade ago and that you know that's what's that's what's queuing up here so it's very difficult for us to tell our young people to be um to be careful to be to be more verbose in what they're saying so we can that they were explaining what they mean it's very very difficult thing for them to be able to do yeah well i mean i I can say this and possibly you can too but i won't put you in that place there are times when i was in my teens and that i was an absolute muppet but as you said there's no record of that thank goodness now i might have been slagged off by my friends and given a bit of a hard time for a few days but after that it died away and that was the end of it Um, but there's no record in perpetuity out there about that thank goodness there's a great analogy you use um, with uh, comparing the, these mobile devices to a car. Tell, tell, us, tell me that. Tell me that in there. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think in fairness, what's happened is it's very easy when you have children around you and, and you're, you're busy parents or whatever it is to hand a, a smart device to a child and let them play around with it. And, and, and on the surface, that's fine. 
And for me, there's a couple of problems around because sometimes you're, you're sort of derogating your responsibility about entertaining your own children. But let's just say that you're a busy person during this, this COVID-19 outbreak and you have to do some work, so you need to engage them some way. What sort of monitoring are you doing on what they're accessing? And that's what I said, when, when you give a, a smart device to any child that has open access to the world, you might as well give them the keys to a car and let them just go off for a drive in it, whatever age they are. You know, there's no, you know, and I think that's, that, that's something we need to be very careful of. Especially the, that we're now, we're now with the school, we're having to get kids, you need to be online, you need to be getting this piece of work, and then you need to be doing it. And we're trying to make tasks that are off, offline that they, can, that they can do and then post back the answers, but it, it, it's inevitable they're going to be online far more than they were, which is a massive unintended consequence of, of, of this is, lockdown. It, it is, and what we must fully understand is everybody is curious. In your teens and that, you're even more curious than you'll ever be in your life. And so therefore, you, you get taken all sorts of places. And that's, a, that's just a natural part of life. But there needs to be boundaries put on it so that it's, you're protected from it as well because you don't know wh what sort of rabbit holes you're going to be going down. And it's easy for adults to look back. And, and I remember my parents saying, oh, Alec, um, you know, uh, that stuff now you, you, you learn in years to come and you're going, what, what, tell me more, tell me more, you know, but they were protecting me. Um, and so I didn't have the sort of challenges that a lot of people who have access to the internet have today. And I think people need to just be very, very careful. For parents out there, and I'm a parent and I'm also a grandparent, I'm very, very conscious of what the children have access to and the potential long-term consequence of that influence on their lives. We also have this instance of where we're, in, we're encouraging these chats. Um, we, as teachers, we've got to be very careful. Uh, we're using, using um, uh, the, communicating with kids in their homes and there's guidelines on it that we're following. But um, the kids are able to call each other up so they can all be in this massive chat. They can all be, having, they can all be saying whatever they want. And, uh, we have systems at the school that we can monitor it, but even so, there's still the uh, there's still these risks of um, uh, someone filming something, somebody else, somebody uh, you know recording bits and pieces of conversations, taking them out of context, and doing other things. Yes, of course. Yeah. We've, we've already had people um, playing about with the chats and muting things they shouldn't be muting, and this sort of stuff. So it's yeah. it's wide open. I mean, you can't blame kids for experimenting with. No, them. no, they do that. Children, uh, children and do that. You know. What what we're interested in here is uh, with these very brief chats, with these multiple uh, multiple chats, are we really getting that those relationships building that? that we would have got, you get in the playground, you get after school, we're not having that sort of interaction at the moment. Um, what, what advice have we got there? No, well, strangely enough, with, with this sort of lockdown situation, we are actually getting back to it, even though it's, it's in this sort of remote setting. Like for example, you and I are having this one-to-one -one conversation um, and I'm having more one-to-one -one conversations with people in business because they actually have the time to have them. It's, it's been a strange sort of um, influence, the, this disease, leaving out what we know and the huge sort of awful impact it's had on society in general in terms of from health and one thing or another. But in terms of some of the things that it's allowed people to do, and the treadmill of life has been getting faster and faster, and it's very hard to get off it. What I have discovered, and certainly talking to business people across the world, is that for suddenly they've had time to sort of draw breath stand back, assess what they're doing, and actually start communicating with people in one-to-one -one conversations like you and I are having now, and to catch up with people in a real and meaningful way. So there is a byproduct of, of an awful situation that we shouldn't overlook. So what, what task could we give our tutor groups to set, so the tutors to send out and discuss, first of all, what we've been talking about, and uh, give them an actual task that they could do um, uh, after they're watching the show today? What, what do you think, what task could we do? One of the things over my 40 years of business I've discovered is that there's no substitute for real networking. And real networking is about listening and understanding people that you're engaging with. So if I was to give people a task, it's, it's very, very simple. I would like you to go online one-on-one -on -one with somebody, possibly somebody that is not your best friend, but somebody that you know that, that would be receptive to having a conversation and for you to find out something interesting about them that you never knew before.
Uh, so you're, so, yeah, and that's an interesting challenge because it requires you to ask some questions and listen. Mm -hmm. And the other person, when you show interest in the other person, there's a fair chance you will have a reciprocal conversation where they'll f try to find out some about you. And that's a win-win for everybody. Right. That is brilliant advice for us. We'll do that. Um, Alec, it's been great to have you with us this morning uh, uh, in this uh, almost real form that we can have a, a, a genuine a genuine chat. And yeah. um, uh, you now we, we didn't say at the start, um, just tell us where you are at the moment. Um, I'm in Dublin. Ireland for those of you who are international or as I like to joke about it because we're by the sea it's sunny Dublin sur la mer and it is um, sunny here in Dublin at the moment um, and, and Dublin for those who don't know is a population of about one and a half million people uh, usually at any weekend we'd have a half a million tourists in the city the city is like a ghost town at the moment and I'm thoroughly enjoying the rest from them so, <laughs> Brilliant. On that note, I'll let you go. Um, thanks for, for being with us and uh, well, hopefully I'll, I'll chat to you again soon. Brilliant. Yeah, fantastic, Aid, and every success with your project for the future. Thank you. Oklahoma when the wind comes sweeping down the plane.